Hello, this is Professor BRB. In this video, we will learn to draw this vase. Uh, we'll be learning some new skills and using some skills we learned in previous lessons. So let's get started. Please reset your Essentials workspace. If you have access to my template, which you can download um, from the link on the YouTube playlist, go to Artboard 6, Vase. And we can just fit our artboard and window here. Uh, and um, we're going to be using our object tools. So you can go to your rectangle tool and just tear off the object tools so that you have them handy. And we'll start with our rounded rectangle tool, which automatically puts a radius on every corner. And let's just try and match these shapes. I've got my uh, default stroke and fill here, white fill and black stroke. And these two go with my rounded rectangle tool. Next, the ellipse tool. And you'll notice I have my, heart, my smart guides turned on, which you can turn on here. And those are quite handy because you'll see that as I go outside my template, it actually kind of shows me when I have a good place to start. And if I'm not in quite the place I want to be, hold down, I hold down my space bar while my mouse button is still held down, and then I can kind of reposition. And that comes in super handy. So get your ellipse the way that you want it. And then we're just going to draw one more ellipse down here. And now we're done with the object tool, so you can put them away. Next thing that we want to do is align them so that they are perfectly aligned on top of each other. And before I select the uh, four shapes, I want you to look up here in the object bar here, or the object panel, and notice that we have uh, information that relates to fill and different other things, um, but doesn't really relate to any of these shapes. When I go to my selection tool and select those four shapes, notice what happens. Everything pops up here. I get my align controls. And if these do not pop up, you can find them under your window menu under a line. Um, sometimes if you have a small screen they might not show, but they usually do. Uh, let's go to the options here and make sure we have a line to selection chosen. Then it's just one simple click and Illustrator perfectly aligns all of my shapes. So that's uh, aligned just the way I want them. Now, next thing that I want to do is I don't like this egg shape at all. I want a more graceful kind of vase shape. And this is quite easy to do. Choose your selection tool and then just click off to make sure nothing's selected and select just those two center points on my ellipse. So you can tell these aren't selected because they have a hollow point and this is because it's got a solid point. And then just using the arrow keys on your keyboard, just hit your up arrow key again and again and again, basically until you like the shape, until it suits you and you think it's kind of a graceful vase-like shape. And uh, when you're done with that, switch back to your selection tool. And the next thing that we need to do is get these shapes to just barely overlap so that we can merge them using the shape builder. So what I'm going to do is start with this top one, select it, and then just hit my down arrow key until I can see that they are just intersecting. And it, it might be easier to do this if I switched to um, no fill, possibly. So let's do that. Get my four shapes going here and just switch to no fill so I can kind of see through and see what's going on. I think I've got those overlapping so now I'm going to get these to overlap. Let's 
select those two. I'm just going to drag them up holding down my shift key so it doesn't go to the right or the left. Get those two overlapping. And then get this one overlapping. While I'm zoomed in here, um, I'd like to get rid, I want to get that flat bottom on the vase. So what I need to do is just get rid of that bottom point on the ellipse. I just select that point with my direct selection tool. First select off, make sure nothing's selected, then select the point, hit your delete key, and it's gone. Uh, the shape will still be selected, and just go to Object Path Join, and Illustrator will helpfully join that for us. So we're ready to merge our shapes. Selection tool, select all four shapes. Um, I'm going to go back and give them a fill just so we can see what's going on. A yellow fill, that's fine. And here is the marvelous uh, shape builder tool. I don't know why a line segment tool is coming up uh, as a hint, but this is my shape builder tool. Select this tool. I love this tool. Uh, it does a lot of what the Pathfinder does, but it does it in a quick and intuitive way. And you'll notice when I mouse over that um, I get a kind of a shaded look here. Simply hold down your mouse button and drag across. And if your shapes are selected, they have to be selected, and if they are overlapping, Illustrator will combine them. Now, let's take a look here. I think I may have not had those perfectly overlapping. Look. These two did not merge. What does that mean? They weren't overlapping. So I'm just going to move that up here, go back, and merge them. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, you may remember from earlier Creative Cloud lessons that Creative Cloud has some interesting capabilities. And if you want to add some radius to some of these curves and modify them like I just did there. You can do that. Uh, kind of interesting right there. I guess I'll leave that just because. Um, notice when I did that I only had those two points selected. If you have everything selected it will curve everything kind of whether that's what you intended or not. So let's zoom out right here. Uh, that's looking kind of interesting, a little different than what I had, uh, but that's okay. Now um, let's apply our gradient. So uh, with my selection tool I'm going to make sure that's selected. And I have, um, I have a gradient here I can use. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of the stroke, which I really don't need anymore, because I can kind of see what I'm doing now. I don't like the way that gradient is applying, but it's very easy to fix. Just choosing my gradient tool. I can just pull this up here. I can use these sliders to control the way the gradient is displaying. And if I want to, I can even edit the color on the sliders. I'm going to make this a little bit darker. I just double clicked on that slider and now it's a little bit darker. And that's kind of good. I like that. Next thing I want to do is draw the decorative line that's going to go across here. And what I want, let me just zoom out so you can see this, what I want is for this decorative line that I'm going to apply a brush to not to show outside the edges of my vase. So in order to accomplish that, I'm going to go to draw inside mode. Uh, draw inside mode uh, is quite interesting. It creates what's called a clipping path and you can only apply it to one object at a time. So making sure my vase is selected down here at the bottom of my control panel I have these modes draw normal mode, draw behind mode, and draw inside mode. Note what happens when I choose draw inside mode. These dashed lines show up and that shows me that this object is in draw inside mode. So if I choose my line segment tool and I just choose where I want that line to be, hold down my shift key to level it and I'm just going to draw straight across and I have a line. 
I have this right now set with no stroke and no fill, my line. And now I can select a brush. And a lot of good brushes ship with Illustrator. If you go to the brushes panel right here, and down at the bottom, the brush libraries are available to you. You can just look in borders, and there's all kinds of ones here that you can play with. I'm going to try Borders Decorative. And uh, I can uh, just experiment and see how these look. Kind of up to me. I'm going to choose this one this time, even though I chose, oh, maybe this one. What do you think about this one? Oh, no, I like this one better. Let's use that one. And uh, let's get rid of that. I'm just going to reset Essentials again here. And while, uh, while I'm at it here, I'm going to um, make that little curve on this that makes it look a little more natural. But when you're done doing um, draw in side mode, make sure that you go back to draw normal mode or you're going to really confuse yourself. And notice now that I went back to draw normal mode, those little uh, dashed lines are gone. Uh, so here I want to put a little few curves on this to make it a little more natural. And if you select your curvature tool here, you can just grab any one of these lines and just gently drag it down just to give a gentle curve. And it's, it's going to be kind of up to you how much you drag it down or if you want to at all. Maybe just a tiny bit and a tiny bit here too. Not very much. I don't want to overdo it. Um, so actually, we're done. Uh, here is our vector vase, and uh, if you, in, if you used some of, if you enjoyed some of our earlier tutorials, you can copy it and paste it onto your workspace, and see if you can use it to create a little illustration. So anyway, thank you very much. Our next tutorial will be building on some of these skills that we have learned, such as draw in side mode. And we are going to draw this delicious looking cupcake. So I hope you will join us for that.